tripping. First thing I'm crazy, they tell me I'm slipping. Damn it, I know that I'm wrong. Damn it, they know that I'm hard. You keep me wetter than water. He bring me up in the morning. I get the check if he asks me. I be as red if he nasty. I cut like his mama, I don't bring no drama, I keep it low key. You don't need to step out, he won't find no bitches better than me. But he take me down and be snapping. Cause he give me down like a tattoo. They wanna know why I stay happy. You know what I say if they ask me. I'm Miko Hornilla. I am from Orange, California, and I've been dancing for about 2009, like maybe 11, 12 years. On and off the first like four years, but then consistently the last last maybe five. Um, I danced in my high school, Lakeside High School, like Elsinore, um, and then danced on Common Ground. I was there for 2014, then took a break. Went back 2017 till like 2020 when the pandemic stopped. Um, and then now I am on the Voyage training team uh, with Sora Yang and I'm just kind of training, um, going down SoCal, like in San Diego, LA, um, and most recently like the studio that just opened next door to me, the offstage studio at GRV. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just kind of training, just kind of learning a lot of different things and just enjoying dance and, and reacquainting myself to people in the community and, uh, and getting to meet people that I met online from the pandemic. Today's the first indoor Monday night workshop, I believe. Yeah, so I think at first it was gonna be a piece that like was super like intense and, and like my most like packed piece. But then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, all right, let's really celebrate each other. And um, cause we couldn't really do that during the pandemic. So the piece will still kind of like be dense with like all the different weird stuff that I do. But I think the vibe is a lot more celebratory and um, really push trying to just appreciate dance with each other as opposed to like on Zoom, which is great because you get to connect with people like from around the world, but there's just something that was gone like during the pandemic when you can't be next to someone or like see someone's face struggling with you or like getting it and then figuring out how they're getting it. There's just like this energy that um, I want to just promote. And uh, what better way to do that with this piece in the first indoor class up here, so. It was just a piece that I was gonna teach to, to, some, uh, to some friends who are like super, real, like really, really good at like very um, energetic and, and, and uplifting and, and, and um, like groovy stuff. And then I was originally just gonna teach it to them, but like scheduling got crazy, so I couldn't. And then I think maybe yesterday, the more I thought about it, I was like, oh wait, I still have that piece. And I wasn't sure about it, but I was like excited about it as opposed to the other one I was gonna teach. And I was like, all right, I think this yeah. is the one that I gotta teach. Um, and then I spent like my drive up here just going over it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Ironically, I was supposed to teach her last year. Oh, and, yeah. then, and then the pandemic happened like right as I was getting excited to like work it out. Um, so I'm doing that now. Yeah, I think I think I was starting to get chances to teach more, um, like because I was just trying to make work and, and share and and connect with different people. Um, and then that didn't work out. But I think what ended up happening was a lot of people stepped up in the community and like put online programs, and I got to meet and connect with people like through that. And so I think um, without the pandemic, I wouldn't have been more open to meeting different types of of dancers and people in different styles and just like being like, hey, why do you like dance? Because I've always just been kind of shy, like in the community. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think uh, getting a chance to connect with a lot of different people, it's like, oh wait, everyone kind of, for the most part, wants like great stuff and wants, you know, is just working really, really hard in whatever lane they're doing. And it's like my, my ideas of dance were kind of very limited and then it was like nice to see different lanes and people succeeding in them. So just more of that, more of just like learning and taking in different different styles of people and also teaching just cause like I enjoy um, making stuff. I'm addicted to making choreography. Uh, I can't stop, I don't know why. But yeah, just sharing and, and, and getting, I think getting better at like having other people connect to it rather than like 
throwing a bunch of moves together and then putting it on people and bleh, having people enjoy what, what, what I'm putting out and feeling good in their bodies. There's a lot like in SoCal cause like in, um, that I just never got around to meeting. I think off the top of my head, like Danielle Moulton, um, just was completely just different from what I do, but then like I collabed with her and, and learned a piece from her and it was like, whoa, like you're, you're crazy. And it's like, oh, I see why you do this. This feels amazing. Like um, uh, David Macias. And I think like my mentors, like Chris Martin, Carla Durang and Sora. And then Sora had Buddha Stretch come train us. So I think those four, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of like the different pieces that kind of made this most recent year. Hi, this is Miko Hornilla and this was my Monday night workshop.